Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my monthly wrap up for July 2020. July was a pretty good reading month. I read six books in total, which may not be as many as previous months, although five of those books I will be doing individual reviews of, which might indicate the quality of the books. And the six books that I'm not doing review of was good, it's just part of the series, so you know, it doesn't involve a review. July also involved the New Zealand Worldcon, which didn't happen physically, obviously due to world events, but it did happen virtually, which I watched various panels of. I am thinking I might do a video relating to the panels of this and talk about them a little bit in the depth, which I did last year for the Irish Worldcon. Let me know if that's of interest to people, but I think I'm probably going to, but I'm not 100% sure, obviously, in the next week. Anyway, the first of the books I'm going to talk about is Look to Windward, written by Ian M. Bank. I did a review of this book last week. This is a science fiction book uh, written in 2000. It is the seventh book in the Culture Universe. There are ten in total. None of the books are directly related to each other. They are all completely independent. They just share a universe and general concepts and such. And this is no exception to that, although this does make a small reference, which is unusual to the very first culture novel, but it doesn't uh, link to it in any direct way, so you can read this without needing to read that first book quite confidently. It doesn't spoil anything either, a point to note. Anyway, this novel is about a uh, violent event that happened in the past, somewhere else in the universe, and essentially various uh, individuals were suffering from um, obviously a violence induced trauma from this, PTSD, and this memory and the psychology of it is what the book deals in. It's how both individuals, groups and a society deals with trauma from violent events and how they integrate it into society, how can they cope with it, how can they fail to cope with it in some cases. It delves into this subject in a really interesting way. It is amazingly well written, I mean it is banks, so frankly that is pretty much be expected. It's got great character, the great setting, and this is a very strong book I would highly recommend overall. The second book that I read is an ebook on my Kindle, so I will put a picture up on screen now, and that is Empire of Sand by Sasha Suri. This is the first book in an ongoing series, the second book is already out. The third book will be out in 2021, I believe. This revolves around two main characters, the first of which is a woman named Mare. She is a unusual character by the world standards because she's one of the rare people that can essentially commune of sorts in a way with the spirits of this world. I'm pointing in a far more simplistic fashion than actually the book says because for brevity. She does this by uh, these very elaborate uh, dance routines, you know, which are very um, sort of religious in the nature, and indeed it is religion and the abuse of religion that this book deals with in a very interesting way. It wasn't easy to get into due to the quite unpleasant nature of certain characters. It makes it hard going because you just wanting certain characters frankly to have horrible things happen to them and then die but you know that is sometimes the case but it does get better and easier to manage after a while once you realise the idea of why characters are doing what they're doing it's a well written book with some great characters and a great world and I am will definitely be reading the next book and eventually the third book as and when it is released next year the third book that I'm going to talk about is King of Foxes, written by Raymond E. Feist. This is the second book in the Conclave of Shadows trilogy. As a result, I'm not going to be talking about this very much. And indeed, this is the book that I'm not going to be doing a separate review of. Frankly, this is the middle book in a trilogy. That trilogy is part of an overall larger 30 book world. And quite deep into it. Anything I say about this will frankly not make a lot of sense because it links back to multiple other books. It is a very good fantasy read, but you need to have read other books by your voice. So at this point, 
so I, was like, I would recommend the Rift War uh, Universe by Raymond D. Forrest just not this book because obviously you need to have read multiple books first this will not make no near as much sense I mean you could read this trilogy separately I wouldn't recommend it at all though it would you know it wouldn't really be as enjoyable frankly without the prime knowledge and without certain interesting facts known the next book that I read was Exhalation by Ted Chiang I have finally read this I've been wanting to read it for over a year now although I prefer paperbacks so it's taken a while for the paperback to be released more than a year after the hardback as is usually the case and this is a science fiction short story collection the second short story collection he has written the first being stories of your life and others which I uh, thought was amazing and was actually one of my favorite books of the year when I read it uh, two or three years ago now indeed a friend of mine uh, Rachel and it's kind of a book too. She also thought the first book, and indeed this book was amazing. And I've talked about it extensively with her. And this is just as amazing as the original. It doesn't have the total story uh, from that Stories of Your Life being quite as super strong because Stories of Your Life was an incredibly strong short story in its own right. In this, Exhalation is one of the smaller stories, which is still extremely well written. But it's not quite the major one of the collection. But all the uh, nine short stories I believe that are in this are all extremely well written. They're all based off quite um, well known premises but written with a remarkably interesting spin on things and basically Ted Chiang does his own thing with every single idea in a fantastic way. His writing is incredibly strong and the, the emotion that he puts into his stories even though some of them are even that uh, character based as well. He manages emotion without characters in some cases, which is impressive, frankly, to see. And I would highly recommend this overall. The next book that I read was the one I can actually pick it up Sorcerer to the Crown, written by Zen Cho. This is the first book in an ongoing series. I believe uh, there will be a third book. I know the second book is actually out, which I will indeed be reading probably in the next month or so more than likely this is a really good fantasy novel uh, which i will do a separate review of but suffice to say this is based in a fantasy or magical um world it's a sort of alternative earth essentially and indeed an alternative london where magic does exist in an interesting uh, way it is given to us or allowed us by uh, the fairies which have their own fairyland. However, the magic in England is starting to decline, and essentially the sort of chief wizard or magician, to put it simply, is told that basically he needs to find out why and hopefully fix why the magic is becoming a problem. And he meets an interesting uh, female character on the way, which she's very unlike many other um, of these sort of very sort of passive um, female characters that are expected from the society because this is a sort of Regency era London sexism is rampant beyond what it is even today and you know you've got a lot of male characters thinking they must be you know manly and women must do you know only minor female things you know because they're too weak and inferior they don't realize that actually you know that's actually a load of rubbish the women are actually normally stronger than men you know, and some male characters actually are aware of this fact. So, you know, it's an interesting story with great character, great world building, and I would recommend this as uh, well. And finally, the last book that I read in July was New Sons, uh, edited by Neasy Shaw. This is a short story collection, which is uh, both science fiction and fantasy. It is a wide range of authors, all of whom are uh, black or people of colour. I am not sure off the top of my head yet, although I will look into this for the review, whether this was timed for now, considering the events of Black Lives Matter and such in America and indeed around the world. But it could be coincidental, these things do happen. I'm not sure, but I will look into it because these are 
all strong and interesting stories. They are very varied in both quality and uh, subject matter. Mostly they are almost all strong. There were a few uh, short stories that I didn't particularly see eye to eye with. But when you're talking about a collection this varied, that's bound to happen. Overall it's a very strong collection however. Well written, very varied with ideas and writing so and concept and indeed some of them feature uh, heavy character building, some are world building, some are something in between, some are different again from those two. I would highly recommend this novel and this collection because it is very different and it's going to be a very interesting and quite difficult one to review in fact. So this should be an interesting one when I get around to doing that review. And with that said, that is it for all of the books that I've read in July. If you've read any of these books or you would like to, then please leave a comment. Also, if you have any recommendations of books you think I might enjoy based on um, any of these, then again, leave a comment and we can have a talk. All my social media links as well as links to anything I mentioned in the video can be found in the description box below. With that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.